Thank you. Let's get started. So, uh, good morning, folks. Uh, I think uh, this, is, this is going to be an exciting session. Uh, thanks for uh, coming up uh, after the uh, keynote. Uh, one thing I learned is uh, life is hard, and, and, and you'll see why here, right? Um, for folks who don't know me, I'm uh, Prem Bangole. I'm, uh, um, I work at the Google. We, we do Wi-Fi on the planes. We have a hotspot on the planes. And then since then, we have uh, branched off to do multiple things like uh, a streaming video product and now live TV on the plane. So um, a couple years back, I came to the show and, and then thinking about building live TV on a plane and, and, and some of the challenges. And HEVC was, was, uh, was something which we talked about, not a, was a concept, it was getting ready, uh, you know, but we try to apply that in, in a practical application and you'll see how we did it. So. So first, uh, you know, just like I suggested, uh, getting live TV. Um, I didn't know what uh, challenges I would walk into, but uh, you know, there was an easy way in. Uh, just put an antenna on, on top of the plane and then try to receive broadcast signals. That was one way to do it. Um, yeah, um, the, the bottom uh, left picture is, is the antenna. Pretty much roughly, um, you know, how it looks on a plane. Uh, you, you, it's it's heavy. It's uh, um, you know, it's it's mechanical parts. The maintenance is heavy. It's it's not the best solution, right? So, and uh, also we realized that uh, you had to stay in coverage. So these broadcast signals are pretty much targeted towards where there's a a, a, a mass of population where they would listen to those broadcast signals, right? So, so if you flew out of coverage area, if you flew over water, uh, in some cases you had to pray that the coverage existed, right? So that was not a good solution. Uh, and then, while while this was happening, we were working on um, GoGo's 2KU solution, which is our uh, data on the plane. Um, you know, we realized uh, putting a new hardware gear is expensive. You know, and uh, just just like I was uh, suggesting, there's uh, limited coverage because you fly out of coverage area. Uh, you, you may not have uh, live TV available. And then we didn't want to put separate antenna for, for a TV component and then a, and a data component, right? So can, we were thinking, could we use the data uh, antenna which we use for data, um, which uh, I loosely call us 2KU. This is our marketing uh, uh, brand, right? And, uh, and also, can we allocate some of the bandwidth uh, by, for the live TV? By doing so, um, you know, you've, you've solved the problem of uh, multi-tenancy and you've solved the problem of not putting any extra gear, right? Um, but we always had this um, cost economics. We were, we were going back and uh, we, were, we were wondering, you know, um, you know we, need, we didn't want to compromise on the quality um, because if you're watching a, a soccer game of some sort or, or, or a football game, um, you, you know, you need a, uh, you don't want to compromise on quality. Um, uh, coincidentally, we are launching this service with Gaul, um, which is a Brazilian carrier. Um, Gaul uh, is an interesting airline when they came and suggested that can you build this product for us because a lot of people uh, wouldn't fly um, based on their favorite soccer team, right? So if Sao Paulo was playing uh, Brasilia, so some people wouldn't fly between those two segments, right? So that was a use case where we, we could put a live TV on a plane, right? Um, here's where uh, HEVC, uh, you know, um, uh, we felt that uh, uh, it could solve our purpose. Uh, it was living up to its hype of uh, H.264. Um, you know, we could we could get the same quality as H.264, but with a um, lower bitrate, right? So, and, and then we did a file comparison roughly, and then they, they kept improving, right? So it was a two to one, and H.265 or HEVC was available today, right? Uh, and new hardware libraries were being built with Intel QuickSync. All those really uh, helped. However, um, the, the challenge was the end devices, like your like your mobile devices or your laptop, did not have HEVC support. I, I think they still don't. Um, or if they do in a, in, a, in a limited fashion, it's not open for, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have an open API because of some licensing challenges, right? So. Um, again, you know, that's, that's uh, one of the problem which we ran into, right? Um, but for the transmission purposes, you know, that really helped where it could, it's going to save us bandwidth. 
uh, we, we were trying to use um, HEVC. And decode, we'll, we'll worry about that later, right? Um, so once we got our uh, platform uh, set, uh, we were going to do HEVC uh, on the transmission side. Um, we were off to races to do the encoder selections, right? So we had a five initial set of uh, encoders, and uh, we set some performance criteria based on PSNR and uh, VQM. Uh, PSNR is, is a industry standard. You know, it, it uh, measures um, you know, quality between two encodings using the same reference signal. And VQM is not, you know, it's not known, but it sol sort of solved our purpose. It's uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Watson. Um, you know, he suggested that the video quality is, is sort of a function which measures the, uh, with the human visual system. I call it visual equity, right? So how do you make it better? So these were the two criteria which we utilized for the vendor selection, right? We shortlisted and then um, H264, everything works fine. And then we go back to like uh, turn on the HEVC, just a couple of them were, were performing. And um, you know, we, uh, um, and we, we asked, uh, we, en we ended up using a, uh, um, elemental uh, from AWS. Um, you know, we were still running into some issues. Uh, they came in um, on site. Uh, they did some tweakings, and then really um, from then I think we solved that problem, right? Um, so the next slide is sort of a rough schematic of uh, how we do our TV ingest, right? Um, there are multiple ways um, to peel this onion. Um, you know, the, you could get a content signal from um, from a broadcast TV auto, you could put a satellite dish in there, or you could do a terrestrial. Um, off late, um, you know, there's more options available to do um, terrestrial ingest. So you could totally avoid the satellite um, receive only signal. By doing so, you're able to cut um, the extra latency of or delay of two two, uh, two seconds, which you know when you cascade, right? It, it just adds up, right? You, you end up seeing a a live TV, which is like four to six seconds delay based on the processing and the transmission which we have. So, um, that, so um, HEVC really helped us to cut down uh, the bandwidth by you know, 35 to 40%. Um, one other um, secret sauce or secret element which we found was is the StatMux. Uh, the statistical multiplexer uh, it can be used in conjunction with this uh, encoder and um, what, what it really did is um, it would, uh, we, we had this fixed bandwidth allocated, but we were betting on the fact that not every channel would be using a larger bit rate. So if there's a sports channel, uh, which is like a sports center, where people are talking, you would consume lower bandwidth. So you would borrow the bandwidth from different channels, right? So, so statistically, your, your, um, um, your, your total output bandwidth is the same, but you are competing based on um, uh, the channels which are playing based on the picture quality which is getting encoded, right? And, uh, and, and then we try to um, uh, put it on a plane and, and flew. Uh, little did we discover that there are some um, um, pockets where you, know, you run out of coverage, uh, network problems. Um, you know, one to two percent packet loss over a terrestrial network is, is acceptable, right? Um, just as I heard Joe uh, by saying, um, yeah, those are defects, uh, but they really have bad experience when it comes to live TV, right? So we had to add this uh, FEC and encryption component because some, some content providers were very uh, specific about security, right? So, so those two added 5% overhead, but still I think uh, in, in, in all sense, I think that's really worth the FEC uh, was really helpful in, in decoding because when it comes to live, uh, the timeliness is, is what matters, right? So um, on the decode side, uh, it was pretty simple. So we had an airborne server. Um, we just uh, um, do the reverse, right? So how, how, how hard it could be, right? But just as I was alluding, um, the, there's a problem on the on the playback side where not all devices have HEVC uh, uh, playback capabilities, right? So um, we were able to transcode 
uh, to downgrade it to H264. So same quality um, on the signals which we are receiving from the decryptor after the uh, error correction layer. And by doing so, I think, uh, um, you know, we were able to solve the problem of playback on H264. So by doing so, we're, today we're, we're future-proofing it for, for an application which could use HEVC, um, um, you know, devices could have. Uh, we also had another challenge. So one other airline had a HEVC-capable uh, playback device glued to the seat back, right? So. So that really helped us where we could just output the HEVC stream back to those devices. So those are the seat back devices you'll see um, in the bottom right. Um, you know, those are, so we were sort of the, the carrier. We became the de facto um, live TV uh, service provider, right? So, and, and, and the bottom, um, um, the, you'll, you'll see that's our antenna. Uh, this is. In comparison with the gimbal antenna, which I was suggesting, um, this is pretty flat, low profile, um, saves a ton of uh, um, gas for, uh, for, for airlines. Um, I, I guess uh, um, th that's one of the reasons why this, this technology, it's also spectrally efficient. So, so uh, just, to, just to summarize, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, we we built the, the first airborne system, which is sort of um, world class, uh, first of a kind to have HEVC and, and StatMux. We're consuming 40% uh, less bandwidth. Uh, then uh, you know that that really uh, you know put um, a big um, uh, win for us. Uh, just just trying to record some cost. Uh, we support all the modern browser combination. Um, it's a flexible architecture. Um, you know, we could migrate to any codec in future or any uh, packaging technology, right? So I think um, Dash has been um, has been something which is being talked about, right? So we will be ready uh, when, when it comes when there's a more adoption, right? And and also um, AV1, right? So I, I think I heard uh, the, the Mark talk about um, open standards at Google Chrome that AV1 is coming and that may solve some of the licensing and uh, uh, the patent challenges, right? So uh, we also use a, a Docker container um, that reduces the memory footprint on the on the airborne server side, and, and the transcoding we use the, the idle lying GPUs on the processor, HTML5, right? So so we also um, built our um, uh, monitoring system. So this is sort of a key component for us. Uh, in past, we would have some. Uh, we would not have vision in terms of like uh, where is uh, uh, you know where is the problem or what's the user experience like. So if I just go back one slide up on the on the decoder side, um, we we have a diagnostic system which is listening to the same signals which is coming out of the the satellite and uh, the, uh, we're, we're measuring. Uh, drop frames and using a mass score um, to uh, to equate to our um, viewing experience you could have and then we haven't integrated finally to the last hop of device analytics but we're working on it so uh, what next uh, just as I was suggesting uh, VP9 um, is getting some traction um, and um, you know the, maybe uh, a JW player with the VP9. So uh, maybe a hardware support is increasing on on the on the graphic card that will really help us as well. Um, you know we uh, um, you know yeah, I heard uh, I inserted the last bullet just a few a few minutes back because I heard Mark talk about uh, uh, YouTube will be all VP9 support right. So that's 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 key. So VP9 uh, will drive the traction. So we'll, we'll be ready. So this is our, uh, our our monitoring dashboard which we have, um, and you'll see uh, you know, everything is automated. Uh, you know, we have a viewing experience and uh, and complaints, uh, drop frames, everything uh, correlated here. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll pause here to see if there are any questions. Sure. 
player? Yeah, um, so uh, good question. Uh, you're right. On the playback side, I think we didn't want an app experience because downloading an app just to watch a live TV was, was uh, uh, would slow us down. So uh, we made it browser compatible on a web, right? So it's th that's where the HTML5. Uh, so if you're using a HTML5 player, um, we we were evaluating JW player. There's some still some um, uh, kinks which need to be ironed out on the HLS playback side. So we ended up using a, a, a Adobe Player, uh, which we have. So this would really help us in, in integrating with uh, with DRM, um, you know, in, in the last mile. So uh, it's it's uh, it's Flash based, but Flash is dying, right? So uh, eventually uh, we may have to move. That's why we we are watching the the JW Player and any other player which could be comparing, right? So. Okay, if there are no questions, uh, I give you 10 minutes back. Um, I think the next session starts uh, at uh, 10 o'clock. Um, oh, sorry, 11 o'clock, right? So.